Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and safe. Back here again for another video. Are you thinking of upgrading your iPad Air 3 to the iPad Pro? Should you be doing the upgrade? If you ask me, well, I might say no. If your iPad Air 3 is still working fine, if there's no real need, then keep using it. The earth will thank you as well as your wallet. But if for some reason your iPad Air 3 is broken or not working as well as it should be, or your work demands more intensive tasks, then I hope this video will give you some idea if the iPad Pro is for you. Here are my main comparisons between the iPad Air 3 and iPad Pro that I may consider. First is for the performance and battery. For me, I use my iPad for all my personal work, tasks, and for creating all my YouTube videos. For the videos I created since April until August, all were edited in my iPad Air 3. Since I got the iPad Pro, I move editing my videos there. So I'd say for the average user like me, I don't see a big difference in terms of the performance. I use basic editing apps like iMovie and VLLO app, and I think these are pretty light apps compared to LumaFusion or other more professional apps. But I'm just really guessing here as I've never really used those. And these apps perform very well. I haven't seen these two apps struggle even if I have a lot of videos in it with a lot of cuts and audio, both the voiceover and the background music, as well as text and all the other editing stuff. So if editing videos is equally good in both the iPad Air 3 and the iPad Pro, you can just imagine others like web browsing, watching videos, note taking are pretty smooth in both. Here's a comparison of browsing from the iPad Air 3 as well as on the iPad Pro. And here's a comparison on writing on the iPad Air and the iPad Pro. As for the battery life, the iPad Air 3 has a bit more of an edge, but just so slightly. I noticed that as I use more my iPad Pro, the battery life is almost the same as the iPad Air 3. Not totally the same as the higher screen quality of the iPad Pro, I believe, uses more battery than the lower screen quality of the iPad Air 3. So in this category of performance and battery life, I will give it 50-50 in both iPads. There's no clear winner, at least for me as an average user. Second category is the screen. The screen is what I enjoy the most in the iPad Pro. Even with the lower brightness, it still looks sharp and clear compared to the iPad Air 3. Watching on both iPads are great because of the big screen, but obviously it's more enjoyable to watch videos on the iPad Pro. I see the pictures more vividly and lively. The screen quality between these two iPads are not of a big difference, but for me, it's noticeable enough and with ProMotion, it makes me enjoy the iPad Pro more. I did not mention looks as a consideration for upgrading to the iPad Pro as it's purely aesthetics and it's not impacting how I work on the iPad. I'd say it's a bonus, but should not be a deciding factor. I will give this category to the iPad Pro as the winner, as this is the big difference that I can see with the iPad Air 3. Next category is the pencil or writing on the iPad. I'll go straight to the point. Both are good. The first time I used the Apple Pencil on my iPad Air 3, I was so happy. It made me enjoy the iPad more and I can try to draw again. 
I believe this set of the iPad Air 3 and the first gen Apple Pencil is more than enough for students or note takers. It's much cheaper to have the iPad Air 3 and the first gen Apple Pencil. Although you cannot buy a brand new iPad Air 3 now in Apple stores or Apple website, I'm sure you can find good deals for second-hand iPad Air 3. As for the second-gen Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro, I enjoy this simple feature of tapping on it and to switch to eraser and back to the last pen or brush. It just makes me more efficient. And it's cool. Lately, I'm also enjoying journaling on my iPad. I've been switching around testing in the Notes app, GoodNotes, and Paper app. But it's really the Paper app that I mainly use now. I don't see much difference in terms of recognizing my very bad handwriting, but paper app is just more nice to use. The layout and interface is also fun, um, and I think it makes my handwriting look better than in good notes. For this category, I will give the win on both iPads. You cannot go wrong if you choose either one. If what you're after is writing or drawing, both are really good. I might lean towards the iPad Air 3 and the uh, Gen 1 Pencil. Yes, it's just cheaper. Last category are the speakers and mic. I love the speaker on my iPad Pro. I can hear the clearer and louder sounds. It makes my experience in using the iPad more immersive and consuming content is better. The iPad Air 3 sound is a bit muffled and it cannot get that loud. Here's a comparison of the speakers. The mic is better on the iPad Pro. If you have seen my last videos, all the audio were recorded through the iPad Pro's mic. Here are some mic tests using the mics of both iPads. This is a mic test recording on the iPad Pro mic. I'm speaking directly on the mic. This is a recording on the iPad Air 3 mic. I'm speaking directly on the mic. But I think the enhancement to the voice memo brought by the iPad OS 14, the difference is smaller between the Pro and the Air 3. So still, for this category, I will give the win to the iPad Pro. So in conclusion, if you're a professional or if you will use the iPad as your main device for working or studying, and for that you need a stable and capable device, Upgrading to the iPad Pro may be a good investment for you. But if you have the iPad Air 3 that is still working well and you use it for taking notes or drawing when studying, watching videos or using social media and other average user tasks, the iPad Air 3 is still a good device to keep. Yes, it looks old, outdated and with the bigger bezels. And if you get the space gray or silver, the black sides make it unnoticeable when you use it. The iPad Air 3 still performs well with no stuttering or freezing even when I do a bit of intense tasks like video editing. The battery life is good. I use it on weekends and battery lasts the whole day. So hope my video has somewhat helped you 
and I make these videos hoping to help you decide if you need it or not. I'm not encouraging my viewers to do useless or impulse purchases. So I hope if you're watching this, you really are thinking hard if you need a new iPad or not. So that's it. Thanks for watching.